Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, let's get started. So first, it's known that if A is a smooth kind of variety, then it admits a color in Stein matrix. If an it it is k positive. So what is known for dimension one? It's a projective line, and it's k positive. And it's a table table unless it's a blow up in one or two points. And for dimension three, it's a final threefold. And in a book, which is called Collab Problem for Finance Ripples, all the problem was posed, and the problem is to find all scalars table finance ripples in each one. What is the approach for doing this? So first of all, let's now assume that X is F is the birational map from silver X to X and a beautiful F is a prime divisor over. Over X, sorry. How beautiful that is a pseudo effective threshold. Uh, we also want to compute um, something which I will call, uh, refer to as S integral in order to, to make some notations. And log discrepancy.
And after that, we can define delta invariant. So it's prime divisors over x. It's a global delta invariant, and also we can define it locally. That's at points on x. So now we're only interested in uh, in those prime divisors which center on X contains this point P. And the following assertions hold. So X is K stable. If and only if the delta invariant is greater than one. And also if and only if the local delta invariant is greater than one for each point on X. No, it's not. Uh, May I repeat the question? Uh, yeah. Well, delta invariant is equivalent to beta invariant, then I guess it should be more or less obvious, but I, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure in, in terms, of, I, I will think about it afterwards if, if, if it's all right. Maybe, maybe it's, maybe, maybe it's, um, um. So then we go to the theory, which was uh, written to, uh, which will help us to prove it. So abundant theory. And we will use the formulas which will written by Kemper Project. So suppose we have a point in X. What do we do? We first choose some surface which contains this point. Uh, then we compute the effective threshold of um, minus k x minus um, Okay, I probably just have written.
uh, then on, on, on for this the effect of threshold we can fill the risk to the composition. And then we compute the S invariant, which will be in this case. Then by a bunch of theory. We will, have, we will have the following inequality. So the delta invariant on X will be reduced to the delta invariant on the surface. Where this thing is the internal over as w integral, which I will only write just once, and after that I will refer it to to it as as w integral. So it's Over one minus x cubed. So note here f is a prime divisor of what t, so it's different from the beautiful f. Which is the surface. And here we reduced our problem from threefold to a surface. So here we have a surface. And here this thing also only depends on surfaces. And we will solve our problem for, so we will solve our problem for surfaces. Yes, it should. It should, if we have, for example, something four dimensional, then we can reduce it to something three dimensional, and then we can reduce it to something two dimensional. But here, when we reduce it to something two dimensional, we, we will here have, we, we will have you here, oh, it should be, it should be V here, so it, they will be two different variables. And we will, if we go from dimension four, then we'll have one more variable when we go to dimension three, and one more when we go to dimension two. So yes, we can reduce it, but we will have more, quite more variance. Uh, no, I think it's for different reasons. I mean, but if you have the either way, you will have some more variables, <laughs> and they will all depend on each other. So the the least one will depend on the higher one.
Okay. So now we want to define a local delta invariant for surfaces since we are on surface on the surface now. We have a full surface. A big and nerve divisor on it. A F is a prime divisor over this surface. Uh, then we will have polarized uh, as integral. Now we have a D here instead of anti-canonical one. And it will be the volume of V minus Vf. And if we have a point, here of C. We can define a delta V. Okay, it will be the infinity of F G the point So, and in case we in an anti-canonical bundle, we will just refer to it as delta environment. We are interested in how as how we can achieve it. What do we do? So first of all, we put the and we are interested in have the effective threshold of of the divisor d minus v c. Then, for this C, we compute the risky decomposition of this divisor. Note that for this curve, our log discrepancy is just one because the curve C is inside the surface C. And we have our F integral. Note that from above, then we just have the delta invariant is less or equal than one over S T, just from the definition of, uh, of delta invariant. And from Below, we will have the following. So we also need as W integral for surfaces, which is a bit easier for surfaces. But the surfaces it will be 2 over e squared. Zero. 
for this thing to be better. The positive So it's something that we can actually quite easily compute if we know all the intersections of on this surface. So for example, if we have ah oh, this. then a Bandron theory tells us that the delta invariant in this case is greater or equal than minimum f1 over s integral and one over s w integral for this surface. And usually, if this surface, uh, if this curve C is a minus one curve or minus two curve, this is a pretty good estimation. So this delta invariant is in between two numbers, and more often uh, these two numbers uh, coincide. So this is how we can compute this delta invariant. And if it doesn't work, we can blow up this point P and do the similar thing on the on the blow up, and we will have our negative curve. It doesn't always work, but it works in a lot of situations. And if it even if it doesn't work, this estimation will give us the inequality which we will use in the end, and it will be enough. Not um, not always, but often. Ah, uh, yes. At first, at first we can try the dividers on on the surface, and then if it doesn't work, we can work. We can work. Uh, we can go out to work about this surface. Uh, that one and this one, yes, yes, there, uh, there is. And that's uh, that's why we're talking about it. It's not a very straightforward, but and there will be an inequality that uh, not not an equality, but inequal. Since there the there is inequality, that then this inequality will help us at the end. Now we go to our report, which will be an example of proving something using this technique. This will be a finite ripple. Of frame. We. So suppose we have a surface S, which is P1 plus P1. 
suppose we have a curve of degree five one inside this T1 from T1. Then we can embed this S into the two cross T1. T1 cross T2. Why it is embedded? So we send EV. One into square one then we identify this C and S uh, with C and the S in here, and we blow up C and we get our S. So this one blow up will be P. Then notice that if we project on the first factor, then this thing will be a vibration into the uh, surfaces of degree four. Because uh, because this is a five one curve here, so it will be a five two curve. Why? <clears throat> the conjecture in Flavio book, which I mentioned earlier is that if every single fiber uh, of this phi has singularities at most A3, so A1, A2, or A3, then X is K-stable. Mm So the estimations of delta invariant, which I will show you later, uh, help me help me to prove that if the singularities are at most a one, then x is stable. So we have S here, and this transform of S will be called. So it's in all three cases, X is smooth, or? Yes. OK. So now we have, how do we prove it? We have, first of all, two options. Either our point O, we will call it O. Uh, we'll show you later in the future. In X belongs to tilde S or not. So if our friend O such that O belongs to tilde S, then the structure of tilde S is just T1 plus T1. And the computations are quite straightforward. So we are not, um, it, uh, it can be obtained just computing the risk positions. And at the end, we will get the delta invariant is greater than one. And I will not show it today, but everyone can try it as an exercise or I, will, I can show you it.
Yes. Uh, usually week one. Mm -hmm. um, it will be anti-economical device for plus one. No, like the point is that it will be slightly different from anti-economical. So from now on, we will assume that our point does not belong to this project. If that's the case, we will do the following. So suppose P bar is the fiber that contains this point. Then we do the following. So we have that this is a delta surface with at most evolving surface. Then we compute the pseudo effective threshold for minus k x minus u t bar. Then we compute a positive and negative part of the risky decomposition, which I will write just now. So oh, it's minus k x minus u c bar on zero one, and it's minus k x minus u c bar minus u minus one tilde s on one two. So when we reduce it to T bar, you'll get something else. So it will be the anti-canonical bundle. This will be zero. And here it will be a curve. Okay. And when we compute S invariant, in this case, it, it will be 69 over 18, which is less than No, no. Uh, the conjecture is basically is that hypothetically there there only can be singularities of type A, and hypothetically you can get at most A four. I think A four in reality you cannot get at all. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. It turns out that if this point does not belong to the S, then our SW integral, which I mentioned earlier, is less or equal than log discrepancy of f over delta invariant of this surface oh, times five over which means it's which means that if delta invariant 
is less, uh, is greater than six over five, then global delta invariant is greater than one. So um, this is the relation we want, uh, one of the relations we want. You can get these relations by rewriting the integrals and the large integral by using like uh, volume inequalities. Um, like not this number, but some yeah. number. Uh, yes, some number. Yes. Yes. So it's uh, the delta invariant on a surface T bar, and it is related to the delta invariant uh, on the threefold. And it's a rough estimation. So this is the the least interested estimation you can get from rewriting those intervals in the beginning. But uh, there is another estimation which is slightly better, but slightly more difficult to get. But this estimation tells us that if, for example, all um, all fibers are smooth, uh, then um, access case table because the delta invariant of a smooth stream is 4 over 3, which is greater than 6 over 5. So in this case, there is nothing to prove. Yes. Okay. And what I will, mm, uh, what I prove is that using a bunch of theory that this delta invariance is greater than what you call them, this function for u is one two in one two. I will later on explain why we are only interested in this second uh, um, in the second interval. Then there is a function. There will be some function, uh, just the example. In in another case, there will be another function. Somehow. Yes. And this is your dependence. So this is your function, and for every v, you will get something depending on you, and then you need to combine it. And this number, uh, it is defined explicitly, but it's irrational, so I, I won't tell. It's, it's, you think of it as, as some irrational number on one thing. So if you prove it, you can also rewrite in those inequalities uh, using the properties of volume, yet that the S integral is less or equal than 3 over 20, where this is just uh, the cube of the antithetical number. From 1 over 2, uh, 5 minus u squared over f v u. Times log discrepancy f. which is less or equal than 99 over 100. So if you, uh, uh, if you move uh, the S integral to the right and this number to the left, you will see that the infinite infin of um, A2 of the bar over the W integral 
is le is greater than one for all the prime divisors. So you will get that our the global delta invariant is greater than one. And since you got this inequality for all the prime divisors, then we are done. Wait. But how can we get this function? Well, we can look at the structure of the surface with A1 and A1 plus A1 singularity. Uh, it, uh, there are two surfaces like that, but we are only interested in one because uh, because of how we built, uh, how the initial map was built. So only two cases are achieved. So in the first one, <laughs> No, no, no. You, you only, only this chance. Uh, where? Uh, it will be the. So you take this, uh, this thing, and you, you look at it on, uh, on table. So this is. This will be the dual graph of minus uh, one minus two first. Um. Okay. Here, um, it turns out that the delta, uh, the delta invariant for this uh, uh, weak delta tester, it is the resolution of T, weak resolution. Mm -hmm. Which will call it T and points in it P. Yeah. These are. Uh, um, the point P, it goes to O on two bar. So it turns out that the delta invariant of uh, of points on this curve are one, here six over five, <coughs> and everywhere else more than six over five. So we only need to check these curves. And from the symmetry, we we'll only need to check three cases actually, because because we have polarization. In case we don't have polarization, we don't need uh, we we only need to check two cases when the point is on this uh, on this curve and on these three. But in case of uh, it being polarized, we'll need to check like these three will be symmetrical and these two we need to check separately. And choosing the Mm. Um, each of uh, each of these th three cases will give us a function uh, on uh, uh, for the delta invariant, and we'll need to choose the strongest function, and this will be the case. And here, the dual graph will look like. So here the delta invariant will be one, 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 and still will be six over five. 
and everywhere else is greater than this. So that initial uh, inequality helps us. So we need to check all of the, in these cases and they will essentially give us the same function. So, and to end this talk, I want to say that for the case of A2 singularity, they don't give us good enough estimation in the sense that when we get the function and we substitute it in here, we get something more than one. So something else should be done in order to get the estimation of what we want or even to do something else. So that's it. Thank you. Have any way. Yes, I think so. But in different cases, this method should uh, should help a lot. I mean, you don't need to. I mean, since I computed all the <laughs> delta invariance for dual delta at the surfaces of degrees greater than three, it can reduce the computation in many cases. So you don't need to work directly on the triple in this case. You can just reduce and use some result and not to check, you don't need to check all the curves. You know, you only need to check those for which your de delta invariance is like less than some number. Yeah, yeah comparing the functions, uh, like uh, for each uh, point here, you get some function. And then you need to take the, uh, uh, the function which is the least on each interval. So you you get, for example, function f1 on, on the interval 1, 2, f2 on the interval, on the same interval, and you are like, and they look like it is, and you work. Yes, and this is, and this is that version of what. Yes. Yes, it should because you, you 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 have functions in your you have two functions. Yes, it is. Yes, yes. Easier than do it straightforwardly, but uh, the, the trick is, uh, I think for fourfold, the trick will be in comparing the fun functions. I mean, if you have two functions in two variables on some interval, so you will have interval will, which will already depend on another variable. This will be the most difficult part in this case. This dependence. Thing. 